Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship today. We gather here in the presence of God. We're part of First United Methodist Church here in Long Beach, and we're grateful for uh, the day that God has made and uh, our presence uh, here and God's presence that fills uh, this room, that fills the whole earth. Uh, welcome into worship today. Welcome those of you who are worshiping online today. We're glad that you're also able to join us and invite you into sharing uh, our worship on Facebook. If you're here in person as well, we invite you to do that. Share it on Facebook, and uh, we hope to reach more people uh, because of that. Uh, just uh, several things to raise up. One is, uh, you know, first we celebrate the fact that we belong to God, and God is faithful. Today we're going to be hearing about God's faithfulness and God's power uh, as we begin a new series of Heroes versus uh, Villains. Uh, that's our Vacation Bible School theme. And uh, in Vacation Bible School, we're going to be looking at uh, how God's power is seen through ordinary people and uh, how uh, God's power can overcome even, even the darkest of things and places and times. And this, that same truth is for us. And we're going to be walking through those, uh, those scriptures uh, in, this, in this series uh, coming up. Uh, several things uh, I want to lift up. One in your bulletin, there's an uh, insert that uh, invites you to uh, complete a spiritual gifts assessment. Uh, we invite you to do that. Uh, some of you have already done that. Thank you for doing that. We hope to have a, have a better picture of the gifts of our church uh, by us doing that together. And so we invite you to do that. There's a, a QR code you can scan with your uh, camera phone, and it'll take you right to our uh, right to the assessment. They're also on both of our church's websites, uh, first United Method firstumclb.org and then the welllongbeach.org as well. You'll see the, uh, the tab right there to go and take that assessment. Also, um, this past week we had 40 uh, youth and adults from Texas and they were here in our area um, working on homes and doing fix-up projects. John Armstrong over here uh, was their liaison and, and the one who guided them into uh, good projects. And so thank you, John, for John's service this past week. But y'all, there were, uh, you, there were uh, air mattresses spread out all over our church, you know, from the library here, uh, some in the sanctuary, uh, in, the, in the youth hall and uh, Sunday school rooms. They were just spread out all over and it was a beautiful thing to, to, to see and to be able to welcome them into our community. And so we're, we're grateful for their presence. I was here for a worship service Friday night when community members who were served were here to, uh, uh, to uh, eat and to worship together. And it, it was a beautiful, beautiful week. Um, this, uh, tomorrow morning, uh, our youth and uh, adults Chaperones will be leaving for a, a spiritual life retreat uh, on, uh, on the Florida Gulf Coast. So be praying for them. We're going to be praying for them later in our worship service. And so uh, we invite you to be mindful of them and that God uh, can connect with them in a special way this coming week. Uh, and pray for our, our, our youth and, and our adults who will be with them uh, in all that heat uh, outside on the beach. All right. Let's continue to worship God this morning, and uh, there are other announcements in your bulletin, especially the one for next Sunday night. We're having a 4th of July uh, celebration churchwide. Uh, a lot of good things will be happening. Uh, be part of it. <laughs> Let's sing as we sing hymn 419, I am thine, O Lord.
together we affirm our faith, we'll be using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As we approach God in prayer, uh, I want to li today lift up a prayer in, in honor of our fathers and in our, uh, or, the, or the men that have been father figures for us. Uh, I've had those in my life, and you probably have too. Uh, not only did we have a, a, you know, a father who raised us, but there are other men in our lives who raised us as well. And so grateful for them. Happy Father's Day. Um, and we, uh, we give thanks today for, for our fathers and for those in our lives who have been uh, very significant in loving us and helping to raise us um, uh, into the people we are today. Um, we're also going to be praying for uh, our youth and their, their adult chaperones as they travel uh, to Big Stuff Camp this week on the Florida Gulf Coast. And uh, we invite you to remember them in, in prayers. And uh, will we offer ways this week to... Be in touch. I should have asked Mary before this. Okay, follow the youth Facebook page, and we'll be sharing. Uh, we'll be sharing off of that page as well this week to keep you updated on what's happening and uh, how we might pray for them and and uh, think of them this week. Let's bow for prayer this morning, and then I'll lead us in our our Lord's prayer. Oh God, thank you for your goodness, your fullness that fills the earth, your goodness that fills our souls. God, we're grateful for uh, your voice that calls out to us. You are never silent. We are never far from you. We are never abandoned by you, nor are we left to our own devices. But Lord, you have put your spirit within us and there's a power at work in us that is greater than any power that is in the world through your spirit that dwells in us and in your church God we put ourselves again in your way today and we build uh, for you that altar that is our hearts for you to uh, reside in, for you to take up residence once again, and for you, God, uh, to fill us day by day. God, where we, have, where we have failed, fallen short, turned after other gods, we pray for grace, God, to, to rise up again. Great is your faithfulness. Morning by morning, there are new mercies from you. So, God, we praise you. Lord, we also praise you for those uh, men in our lives, whether they were our, uh, our fathers from the point of our birth, whether we were adopted, befriended, or just loved by men in our lives who helped us to become what we are today. We give you thanks for them. We acknowledge shortcomings. But God, we thank you for love that has been given. Some may be with us in this world and others are, are with you in eternity. For all of these, God, we give you thanks. And Lord, too, our prayers this week will be with uh, those from our church who are making a move to place themselves in your space, to place themselves with others 
who are like-minded, who are seeking to grow your spirit in their lives. God, grow your spirit within them. We pray that for this week that they will have eyes and hearts opened to the wonders of your grace, of your love. God, bless those who are going that they might grow stronger in faith, that they might encounter your deep divine love, and that they might grow closer together in bonds of, of community. God, we pray that for all of us, that we seek to grow deeper and deeper into your arms of, of grace, that we might be vessels of your power, aligning ourselves with your purposes in your world. And God, now we pray and honor you. We lift up all these things to the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. And together as one, we, we pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Let's stand as we sing hymn 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
may be seated. Our scripture this morning is from 1 Kings chapter 18. I'll be reading verses 16 through 21. Now hear the word of God. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. When Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, Is it you, you troubler of Israel? He answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you have. 
and your father's house because you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and followed the Baals. Now therefore have all Israel assembled and meet me at Mount Carmel with the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asaroth who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent to all the Israelites and assembled the prophets at Mount Carmel. Elijah then came near to all the people and said, How long will you go limping with two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. The people did not answer him a word. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, this past week... Um uh, our family was in Starkville uh, for the wedding of our oldest daughter, Erin, and we thank you for your, uh, your kind words and comments uh, on Facebook, and uh, there are pictures out there. If you want to see a picture afterwards, of course, I've got plenty on my phone, and so, uh, and Ann does too, um, but I'm grateful uh, for being uh, Aaron's dad and grateful for being dad of, of all three of our kids. In fact, uh, uh, years ago, maybe 10 years ago, our daughter Lauren gave me this uh, cross, and uh, it's been sitting uh, in my office uh, for the last few years. I decided today I'm going to put it on. And so, Lauren, if you're watching, uh, thank you for the cross again. Um, I'm very grateful, and again, happy, happy Father's Day today. One of the great things I, I enjoy about being a dad is, uh, is the dad joke side of it. So if y'all will indulge me just for a, 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 a few seconds, I've got, a, I got some good ones. It's hard to narrow down. There's so many great dad jokes out there in the world that it's hard to just limit it to two or three or five or a hundred. And so we'll see how many we get through today. Now, I've only got a few. And uh, I like to play golf, so I appreciate this. Uh, why did the golfer bring two pairs of pants? Oh, you've heard this one, yeah. <laughs> in case he got a hole in one, yes, he needs to. How do you stop a bull from charging? Cancel his credit card, yeah, wah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Is he not done yet? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Well, what do you call a, a, a line of men waiting to get haircuts? A barbecue. Why do, why, do seagulls, why do seagulls fly over the sea? And what would they be if they flied over bays? Bagels. That's right. See the bagels? All right. And finally, the last one. Thank you, Jesus. Um, <laughs> How do you fix a broken pumpkin? Of course, with a pumpkin patch. <laughs> there, now, now all, you, all, of you, uh, all of you are, are armored up for uh, telling some jokes during the day. <laughs> so here we go. So it's good to have fun, but, but the story we're reading about today in, in, uh, in 1 Kings 18 uh, is really no joke. And uh, it, it's, very, it's a very serious story and one that we, uh, we want to be able to tell our kids at Vacation Bible School because in this story uh, we see illustrated uh, the power of God and, and, and what we're pulled toward uh, in our world. We're pulled, always pulled toward uh, other gods, the gods of the earth, away from, away from our God. And so in this, in this uh, series we call Heroes vs. Villains, we're, uh, we're prepping for VBS. You're going to be armed up and armored up with these uh, scriptures, uh, informed up. And every Sunday leading up to VBS, we're going to be uh, touching on one of these scriptures, one of these biblical heroes and uh, hearing their story. And uh, by the way, if you haven't yet, there's still room for you to volunteer for VBS. Uh, there's room for your neighbor's kids, grandkids, your kids. Uh, there's room uh, for all of you to uh, have a great time. It's a fun fun time, uh, Vacation Bible School. Now, a little bit of background here on what's happening in our story. Um, the backstory is, uh, there's an Israel, in Israel, there's a king named Ahab, and the queen is, is Jezebel. You might have heard of, of Jezebel or Ahab. These are the villains, 
okay? These are villains. They have been promoting uh, the God of, of uh, their neighboring, uh, the neighboring nations. The God was called uh, Baal. Uh, I'm going to pronounce it Baal or Baal or Baal. Uh, either one is, is probably okay. It was believed that this God, you know, controlled the weather and controlled the fertility of the ground and particularly, you know, the God of, of, of thunder and lightning and the God of rain. And it's believed that, that uh, by, by worshiping this God that you would ensure that your crops would, would be fruitful, that the, your ground and, and your crops uh, would be exceedingly fruitful uh, because your God can control the weather and, of course, you want good crops because that means what? Uh, you won't starve. Uh, you will ensure your security. Now, the king, King Ahab, along with Jezebel, ha has been leading the people of Israel into the, the worship of, of Baal. And Ahab has ordered all the altars to God spread out over the country uh, of Israel to be torn down thrown down, and most of these are, are simple stone altars out in the open. And so these are dismantled and thrown down. Now, Elijah is the hero of the story. He's the hero because he's the one who keeps leaning on God. He also has been telling the king, and that's what his job is, his job is to tell the king that God was going to cause a three-year drought, and your God, who controls the rain, will have no power, will be shown to be empty of power. And so, sure enough, there is a three-year drought, and it's at the end of this three-year drought, nearly the end of it, that finally we have this, uh, this throwdown on Mount, Mount Carmel, or I call it the bombshell on Mount, Mount Carmel. You know, it is, it is a big deal, a big event. The whole people of Israel are gathered and they will decide who they're going to serve and on which God they will lean. So if you've got your, if you've got your Bibles, I want to invite you to open up to, uh, we're going to just read through this whole story. It's a little much to read um, all at once. So we're just going to read part of it and then uh, pick up, uh, I'm going to comment a little bit about it and then we'll keep moving through it. So uh, beginning at verse 20 in... 1 Kings chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18. If you've got it on your phone, you can look it up quick. If you don't have it on your phone in your pew Bible, it is found on page 310. So 310. There you go. So verse 20, it says, So Ahab, the king, sent to all the Israelites and called them out and assembled them at Mount Carmel. Elijah then came near to all the people and said, How long will you go limping with two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. And the people did not answer with the word. They were silent. So today is a, for them is a day of decision. Who are you going to devote your lives to? Devote your lives toward an idol, the gods of the world, the gods of the earth, or devote your lives to the God, the God who, who created you, the God who called Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who created your nation, the God who is life. You can't have both. Trying to have both is like limping along through life. That's how, that's how Elijah describes it. Why do you insist on, on limping between two different gods? If you want to limp, that's up to you. But why would you want to go limping through life when you don't have to? You cannot serve two gods. You cannot lean on the gods of this world and the God who made earth and heaven and you, you can only lean on one. You can't both. And you can't keep jumping back and forth. You can't have your cake and eat it too, as much as we would like to. 
Choose today who you're going to serve. Now, the ancients had, had this god Baal, the god of thunder, lightning, rain, who could be leaned on for good crops, it's, it's thought, good soil, good crops, plenty of food, which means you wouldn't starve, which means you would have security. So they sought a god who was powerful, who could make them feel safe and secure. And, and we do the same things today. I mean, we seek for the things that make us safe and secure, what we hope will make us safe and secure. And so we seek security through wealth. We, we seek safety through having stuff. Uh, the more stuff, the better. Um, you ever been at that point of decision when you're about to give, get some, get, uh, donate something or get rid of something, give it away, and you're caught by that one thought, wait, what, wait a minute. What if I need that tomorrow? and I don't have it, I'll be hurt by that. You know, has anybody other than me ever said that, done that, experienced that? <laughs> okay, I'm not, I'm not the only one, all right. Do you recognize that we, we lean towards depending on stuff, on wealth, for our security, for our well-being, for the fullness of life. We do. It's a, it can become an addiction. And we can never have enough. Or we, what if we seek security by, by seeking to take power away from others who are not like us? So that our group will have more power and after all, we're in the right, they're in the wrong, so we're going to take, because we want to feel secure in our rightness. What do you lean on is, is ultimately the question of Elijah to the people of Israel. It's a question to you and I today, on what do we lean? What do we lean on that is not God? And you, then you will discover the gods that you worship and the altars that you have erected to them. Because you hope they will make you feel safe and secure and keep fear away. So Elijah's question to Israel is, is, God, is, is the question for us. How long will you go limping and bouncing between gods? Then verse 22, we pick up the story. Elijah says, uh, Elijah said to the people, I, even I only, am left a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets number 450. Let two bowls be given to us. Let them choose one bowl for themselves. They get to choose. Cut it in pieces. Get it ready for a sacrifice. Lay it on the wood, but put no fire to it. Because that's how you offered an Offering to your God a sacrifice, you, you lit the fire. But Elijah says, no, put no fire to it. I'll prepare the other bowl and lay it on the wood, but put no fire to it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by fire is indeed God. All the people answered, well spoken. Sounds good. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose for yourself one bowl and prepare it first, for you are many, 450 of you. Then call on the name of your God, but put no fire to it. So they took the bowl that was given them, prepared it, and called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, crying, Oh, ba Baal, answer us. But there is no voice and no answer. They limped about the altar that they had made. Do you hear? Do you hear? What happens after, after the crying out, after circling the altar? Elijah calls it limping around the altar. Silence. Silence. No answer. There is only silence from the gods that they have made. And they limp around the, oh, it's like, they're not walking, they're not marching, they're, 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 they're constrained. They're, they're not able to stand upright, they're, they're limping around the altar. 
And this is, this is where uh, Elijah starts trash talking uh, the prophets of Baal. He really does. Um, and at noon, straight up noon, Elijah mocked them, saying, Cry aloud, surely he is a god. Either he is meditating, or he has wandered away, or he's on a journey, or perhaps he is asleep and must be awakened. And they heard what Elijah said, and they cried aloud, as was their custom. They cut themselves with swords and lances until the blood gushed out over them. As midday passed, they raved on until the time of the offering of the oblation. But there is no voice, no answer, and no response. And so after their initial uh, foray into shouting out after their God and calling on Baal to, you know, light the fire down here, they get silence, the sound of crickets. So they get busy. They start shouting to get their God's attention. Maybe, maybe we haven't, haven't been yelling it loud enough. Maybe Baal is waiting to see if we're really serious about this or we're going to start cutting ourselves, cutting our flesh, and Baal will see our blood and how much we're suffering for him, and then surely he will answer us. So do something, Baal. We're serious. We seek out the uh, security of you know, they get really busy, don't they? You know, we, we seek busyness. We seek the busyness and distractions uh, by, by all kinds of, of things, by, by entertainment, by sport. Um, we, can, we, we, we can make idols out of, out of enter entertainment, out of, out of sport. Uh, Anne tells a story back in our seminary days that a uh, professor, I think, of hers had uh, told the story in, in class about being stopped by a tourist on Duke University's campus. And uh, the, the, there's a huge Gothic cathedral at the heart of the campus, beautiful uh, place of worship. And the, uh, the tourist was asking directions, uh, you know, how do I get to, you know, point me in the direction of the chapel, of Duke Chapel. And, and so the, uh, the Divinity School professor uh, paused for a moment and said, uh, turned around. They were right next to uh, the basketball arena, uh, Cameron Indoor Stadium. And, and so the, the professor just pointed over there, look, you know, if you want to go where people worship, it's right there. No one is camping out to get into Duke Chapel. No one is living in tents for six weeks to get into the chapel. If we're not careful, we make idols and we try to gain our identity from the things that entertain us, things that keep us busy. We seek purpose and meaning from these things, but we hope they can give us an identity, give us meaning in our lives, but can they really? We're empty. And so we cry out to these gods to, to fill us with, with meaning and purpose. Fill us with, with, uh, with, with joy. Fill us with uh, celebrating. Fill us with good things. Make us something more than we are. For the priests of Baal, their pursuit of their God causes them to, to harm themselves. And so they... That's experienced by them cutting themselves with swords and lances. and They get loud trying to get their God's attention. So how many times do we seek uh, security from the gods of the earth and we end up empty, alone, hurt, wounded? In the end, the, the God of the priests of Baal they, has no voice, no answer, no response. The gods of the earth, in the end, have nothing to say to us, nothing to give us. They're empty. They cannot speak, for they are empty of any power. Then Elijah said to the people in verse 30, Come closer to me. And they all leaned in closer. 
First, he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been thrown down by the king and queen, their, their people. In verse 31, Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be your name. You know, way back in their history, the Lord had come to, to Jacob. And at night, they, they, uh, a, a, an angel from the Lord and, and Jacob wrestled, and that's when God gave Jacob a new name, Israel, for you have striven with God. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. So Elijah, he also got busy. You know, the prophets of Baal got busy to no, to no avail. The Elijah then, he gets busy. Not with his own agenda, but with, with God's agenda. His, his first work is to create the space where, where God's power can be displayed. And so he starts picking up the stones that have been thrown down, that had made the altar before. So he stacks them on top of one another, those 12 stones. And here's the key point, you know, that I, that I hope we can get. Elijah himself had no power, but the secret to any power he might have was his faith and his trust in the God who is power. Elijah's work was to build the space where God's power could rain down. And so he he started the altar and he built it, the one torn down by Ahab. And you know, that's, that's our work as well. Our, world, our work in today's world, yours and mine, is, is not being busy with our agendas and our plans, but to make room in our lives and our homes and our communities for God's plans. You know, what, altar, what kind of altar are you constructing? We're all constructing something. Is it an altar that can make room for the, the power and the, and, the, and the person of God in our lives? That's why we're asking you, and I'm asking you, you know, God has given you gifts through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that lives in you. God has given you gifts through which God can work power. Uh, but if we leave them unclaimed, uh, unused, There's little room for God to maneuver in us. Then we pick up the story. Then he made a trench around the altar large enough to contain two measures of seed. Next he put the wood in order, cut the bowl in pieces, laid it on the wood. He said, fill four jars of water, pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. Then he said, fill up four more jars and again pour it on the of water, put it, pour it on the wood. Do it a third time, he said, and they did it a third time. So the water ran all around the altar, filled the trench also with water. And at the time of the offering of the oblation, the prophet Elijah came near and said, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, that I am your servant, that I have done all these things at your bidding. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, so that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering, the wood, the stones, the dust, and even licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord indeed is God. The Lord indeed is God. So here you have this culmination of the story where the people of Israel have really bailed on God with Baal. They have bailed out on God. And they've been led to do it. And the question that begs to be asked for us today is, is, is what are ways in where we're, we're pulled to bail on God? How might we be led away from God instead of being led towards leaning on God? And another question for all of us to wrestle with is, why would we settle for a lesser power than that of God's? Our main scripture in, in VBS comes from John, 1 John 4, verse 4. It says, God's Spirit is in you, 
We spent six weeks in the domino effect, you know, driving this home. God's Spirit is in you and is more powerful than the one who is in the world. God's Spirit is in you and is more powerful than the one who is in the world. Perhaps today is the day to ask ourselves, how's the altar of, of our soul, of our heart? How is it being chipped away? How is it being uh, reinforced and, and renewed day by day? What practices do you go, go through every day or on a regular basis that builds uh, the altar of God in your life so that there's more room for God's presence and God's power to be turned loose for good? What we've been doing here in our church in a very intentional way is creating uh, spaces, creating opportunities, creating groups where God's power can be at work. One of these groups is our, is our prayer ministry. Um, if y'all want to see power at work, go, go, and there's room for you in Moore Hall, Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. There's a group that prays there every Wednesday night, and I've witnessed the power of their prayer. They create space for God to show up, and they, they, they turn themselves over to God. They call out to God. They, they trust that God is going to answer, and God does. And, and I hear word, uh, you know, stories from them almost weekly. You know, we were praying about this before we even left. <laughs> they answer. We, we heard an answer to prayer. Not just, you know, in our minds, but we got a text message. We got a phone call from that person we were praying for. God has answered our prayers. They have prayed for and have seen miracles of those locked in chains of addiction being set free. They have prayed for relationships to be restored, and they have. They've been calling out to God on your behalf, on our behalf, on the behalf of our community, and God is answering. And y'all, anyone is welcome. Anyone is welcome to be part of this power at work in the world. Maybe today is a day for each of us. Maybe it's to, maybe it's to, okay, somehow the altar in my life has been torn down. Let's start building it together again. Maybe today is a day to say, I need to add one more block, one more piece to God's, to this altar, to God. Maybe I need to make more room in my life for, for God's power to be turned loose. Or maybe it's today is a day for you to celebrate the fact that God's altar in you is strong. And God is moving in your life. And you've seen and witnessed the power of God at work. For all of us, it's maybe today is a day to, to rediscover how we might be pulled away from the altar of God towards the gods of this world. And to rededicate or re renew the altar of our lives. Whatever it is for you, I hope you'll take this opportunity and go back and read the story in 1 Kings 18 and, and just taste and see. Our God is not silent. Our God is active. Our God is strong. And there's a power at work in you that is greater than any power that is in the world. There's good news there, that you are not left alone. Your security and your future is not without hope. It is bound up with our God. I want to invite you into that today. So let's bow and let's pray. Lord, our God, thank you for uh, the gift of your spirit that dwells within us, that is greater than any power that is in the world. We pray for those in our, in our community, in our world, God, who have been hurt by the gods of the world, where we have been hurt. And we pray for healing and renewal. We pray for uh, a new sense of your spirit and of your power at work in us, at work in our community, in our church, 
and in our world. And God created in us this altar to you, which gives us our meaning and our purpose in our life. Lord, this is our hope and our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, we'll present our offerings to God. The offering plates are located by the sanctuary exits, or you may give online or by check through mail. Please pray with me. Dear gracious and heavenly Father, we bring our offerings before you. Thank you for your love and guidance. And thank you for the love and guidance of our fathers. Thank you for your faithfulness in supplying our needs. We are humbled by your blessings, by your love through Christ. Thank you for loving us. We ask that our offerings be pleasing to you and that you use them to fulfill your holy purposes. When you call on us, help us hear and act. When our neighbors are in need, help us see and be your representatives so that our lives may also be pleasing to you. In your name we pray, amen. Please stand. Him is him 384. Love divine, all loves excelling. divine that has come down to earth 
and has fixed in us a dwelling, an altar, where all God's faithful mercies dwell. Jesus has come in compassion and love, salvation. May you go into the world bearing this gift and bearing the presence of God to the world that needs it much. So go in his grace and his peace now and always. Amen.